Hey, hey, it's the Mandible Judy cast and crew chat weekly. It's weekly. Did I say weekly? By the way, every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, which is what time it is right now. And uh, I think don't 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 quote me on that. I mean, time uh, is guys, an illusion, right? <laughs> I am joined by Clayton Romero, Mike Hall, Mark Costenbader, and Novus Opera. No, Novus Opera is you. Who is this guy down here? Novus, Novus Seta. Seta. I, I knew it was something <laughs> Italian. I, all right. But especially we have a special guest this week. John Dylan Keith is with us from um, Bob's Burgers. John and I go way back. Hi, John. Hi. Thanks for having Hi. me. I like that. Nice place I like you got that. here. I like what you're done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you did with these five windows. <laughs> uh, I like just looking at your um, your Fender Rose just sitting there quietly behind you. So, it's a Wurlitzer 200A. Oh, but I, you know what? See, it's all the way what back there. It oh, is. but they're pretty far away. There is a substantial yeah. amount of envy that I think most of us are experiencing right now. Uh, just looking oh, back yeah. at your space there. <laughs> you got all kinds of things going he, on. He played it down. He tried not to make it too obvious, you know. But it's just that's this is the what I have to work with. Basically. If you could like, this... I didn't neaten up for you. Sorry. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. Oh no, th that oh, off, off camera is where the magic happens. It's and, and it's it's a horror show. <laughs> there's there's I, so I've been, much to unpack. The last there. few weeks. It's it, there's been a lot going on the last few weeks, and I've been waiting for a little bit of downtime, which I'm about to get to combat the clutter and the mess and the put away stuff. I'm pretty bad at like, that's what we all say pulling something out say. to record with it and then like putting it there. And it's still well, there. you might yeah. need it in another five minutes. That's yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> I don't think that's what I'm thinking. I don't think I have that conscious thought. Okay. No, that's not where you were going with that? Fair enough. Well, I mean, I'm hoping that, that I can't tell if that's a guitar or a ukulele. It's strangely foreshortened or, or what's the opposite of foreshortened in the background this, on the other here? side. Too the shortened? one with the open case on the other side. Yeah. This here? That's, yeah. that's a ukulele. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's so strange. Calling. You could have reached reached back like five feet further with your arm and, it, and pulled back a guitar and I would not have been surprised. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nicely oh done. <laughs> Nicely done. This ukulele? I do love the fun, this like... string steel dreadnought perspective ukulele? Perspective shift right. there, because that totally could have been another three feet back exactly. further, and yeah, it would have been a... Yeah. Straight does, out of hammer does, space. Uh, does, does virtual backgrounds work in this environment? Uh, if, if you want to, if you want that. to, so I was, uh, I, I'm I'm not gonna mess with it right now. But I I was doing that in Zoom meetings for a while, and it, mm. it, it <clears throat> you, without a green screen, it's it works pretty well. But if you if like if I did that, my arm like I disappear into the <laughs> background. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm just neatening up because I noticed how. How yeah, how horrible. You know, I, what I'm really I'm gonna do here to make myself look more like a musician like John. I'm gonna actually expose the keyboard under this. There you get you get like three keys. Dude, you okay. can't you can't expose yourself on Twitch. They they ban you for that. Yeah, it's, they're really <laughs> upset Jeffrey about Tubin. those things. Right. That's called I a pull, Jeffrey I pulled Tubin. This out of the garbage. <laughs> That's right. Or just the verb tubin. I like yeah. that the best. What were you doing last night? Oh, just tubing. Just a little tubing. You know, being, being naked. It can, go, and, it can and mean so much. It can, God. Yeah. <laughs> Again. I know it sounds crazy. I just meant but water sports. I just meant water sports. Just from those oh, two. Oh, oh, never mind. I, wanna, I, didn't, I, I didn't mean water sports. <laughs> okay. I want to guess if that's a Korg. Is that a Korg? Fine. That yours, Chris? The keyboard. Where? The keyboard. No, it's it's actually. The no, otter is asking really a question. Crappy. I swear to God, I pulled this out of the garbage in in Kensington, Brooklyn. Um, it's uh, I think it's a Yamaha, but it's like okay. a, or a Casio. It's a Casio, yeah. but it's like a really big weighted keys Casio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so it looks really heavy. 
fortunately, like four or five of the keys are broken, which is why it was in the garbage. But it still uh -huh. works. It's got on board like four sounds, like an organ, a piano, a freaking harp or something. I don't know. Harpsichord or something like that. It's useless sound wise, but freaking it's, hammer, um, you know, I use it to write. I just, Can you guys it's hear me? Piano yeah. mm -hmm. Hey, Mark, is that you? Yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mark is sorry. there. That's all. I was just making sure uh, that I was uh, okay. audible. You and you're, are, and you're so. not you're not in transit somewhere. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm. I am saying. not in transit somewhere. <laughs> okay, so, so John knows what we're talking about. Um, Mark is often like on a subway, a bus, you know, I don't know, like in a car when he logs into our, our chat. I, we and it became like a regular. We wanted to make it a segment, but he was too inconsistent, so is, we couldn't make it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Mark, too inconsistent. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too, I'm inconsistent. <laughs> Sorry, I don't make enough money to afford to be commuting up and down New Jersey. <laughs> so, John, okay, uh, just for the people, this is actually at, at my home. sleeper cabin on an Amtrak. Uh, I'm I'm uh, traveling <laughs> on the Acela right now. I, I had my I had my crew dress it before I. I, nice. I can't I can't go anywhere without all my shit. It's like of Keith Richards not. in his library. I, I I need all my stuff. <laughs> In my, in my uh, sleeper cabin on the Acela. <laughs> For the so we're we're gonna make this. Uh, we're gonna actually do a real interview here. I think, right, Clayton? Did you have a question? Yeah. Were you, well, you were about yeah, to start I mean, and get serious oh, for a moment? Okay. I, just a, just for a, a just a, a tick. Yeah, I mean, just ultimately, just getting context, right? So for the the folks at home, um, who may not know the relationship here, uh, John, Chris, how do you guys know each other? Oh, I don't know how important that is, but we'll just we'll just blast through it real quick. Brilliant. John and I were lovers in the seventies and, wow. and in the eighties. Saw that coming. Um, so saw that coming. Yeah. You remember when um, I actually, was working we, for you at the studio and we went out for lunch when you were in Chelsea? We went to the Whole Foods for lunch. They go to the <laughs> buffet, and we go. And there was a guy had like a little, you know, offering up food. Uh, you. A sample tray that's what they call it uh, but it, it was like a cooking demonstration sample station and so he and this is in chelsea in new york and uh he we walk up looking for free food obviously and he looks at us and says which one of you does the cooking <laughs> <laughs> and it was hard and we both went, to keep he story. does that'll be him <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we were probably bitching at each other about work, so you know he thought, yeah, okay, the, bitchy. They've days, been they've been together know, for years, a couple old days. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but you guys were from the music scene, though, right? Um, well, no, well, sort of, and yes and no. John, um, we met through I think Mike Burke, right? Introduced us. Yeah. Burke spelled differently, spelled like me, but with an E R K. Um, and uh, John came to work at my studio uh, in, God, I don't know, when was that? 99, 2000, 99, 2001? 2000. Yeah, 99. Jesus. We're so old. Or at least I am. I was anyway. six years old. Um, it was really nice of you <laughs> to right. violate child labor laws. <laughs> you know? Fucking prodigy. You got you to gotta do right by the kids, you know? It's all about the kids. It started in um, filing. John proved himself. <laughs> If you start yeah, them right. young, you can John get them to do himself anything. To be a, a great, a great <laughs> sound designer and and an audio editor, and and didn't take any shit from me whatsoever. So I, nice. I think I respected that for sure. Solid um, qualities. But yeah, so uh, we we moved on to a different studio after that. Uh, the two of us alone, and uh, we I lost. I had like one point we had five people working there when in the heyday, and then dot bomb happened. Not that it really affected us that much, but it did affect the rest of the economy, and that affected us. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we moved on, and uh, we've been uh, staying in touch. And um, I really wanted, John, I really wanted to pull up the Little Bill music you did. But I thought, <laughs> that's inappropriate on a number of levels. <laughs> I don't know what levels. Should we tell but, them about um, that? Uh, it, it, uh, the, the, the subject? Yeah, the the <laughs> Oh well, yeah. I guess his name is no longer uh, <laughs> polite company. Yeah, right. 
uh, it was a, it was a Bill Cosby um, mm. uh, piece that was like a, a kids disc for for um, you know uh, for a company that we won't <laughs> we won't name and embarrass them, but um, we we were doing the audio including the music and John was writing all the music. I was doing like voice editing and recording editing and sound design, and um, and John wrote this really great jazz score. It's so nice and it's just so. It just sound it's so kid friendly. It's amazing. It's just lovely. And um it was we were both kind of manic at that point because we're not now. I don't know if you know knew that, but we're not manic at all now. Um but Okay. But anyway, yeah. That, those were good times. Good stuff, John. Um very cool stuff. But I figure, yeah, yeah I, I'd good. have to dig for it and hmm, go ahead. That, that 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 phase comes up a lot, uh you know, uh, uh periodically music scoring students and stuff will approach me about bobs and they say well how'd you get your start and then so it always starts back at bong and dern and talk about you know it was really like that's where i learned how to do audio i was i was just uh, playing in bands before that and i didn't know how to like do he was anything. six and, as you heard he was <laughs> yeah, but ahead, it, sorry. It's, it was a great way to learn uh signal flow and audio because it was you know the audio books and the j recording vo was just one mic yeah one track yeah <laughs> it was easy for me to get my head around so like the, that was a, a, like a yeah. nice like easy uh slow on ramp so you know it's funny because you say that no, but that's I, good. I know a lot of like a bunch of the actors who work with me um they all really struggle with editing their own audio so it's a i mean i think that for guys like us, we have a tendency to not give ourselves enough credit. It is a far more nuanced thing. Or maybe we're just super, super nerdy, and we just have the attention span for the crazy dry technical because no one else yeah, does. Yeah, I'm going to go with the nerdy man. I mean, come on. We all <laughs> spent so long in front of soundboards, in front of you know effects racks, and then all of a sudden computers and working with the DAWs, and then somebody comes in and says – how do you do that? And you start trying to explain it. And then you realize there's like 15 years yeah. of explanation. <laughs> Good point. Do they, do they have a hard you time doing it technically? I was, just, I, I would imagine that our actors can like handle it, but like just rec editing your own voice, you get in your head and like, Oh no, it, it largely is technical. Uh, I mean, oh, there yeah. is, there is some element of it that is, getting into your own head but they actually from a voice acting standpoint they recommend that voice actors listen to themselves perform and listen to themselves talk because it is just uh it's a brutal experience and if you don't know what you're <laughs> we have people all <laughs> Look, you I'm fucking listening. hair farmers. I'm listening to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, I'm not but, distracted at all. Yeah. So when you're talking about um, <laughs> voice actors, like if you don't know that you make all the horrible mouth noises, unless you oh, edit yeah. your own shit, you never yeah. know that. So they, like, especially for all of my voice actors, we force them to listen to the un, like the raw for all the stuff they record. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy that. <laughs> It always makes it you make them sound like yeah. they're they're eating macaroni and cheese while they're you know because it's all that is that, oh. is that remember that thing chris uh language removal services remember <laughs> that guy it, it was like an art project by somebody oh, that did yeah, this yeah. kind of work and yeah. he used to and he would like he That's would right. do like a celebrity interview but then he would take all the edit out, out junk and put that out and it was like susan sarandon and it would be like <laughs> oh my you're kidding <laughs> for like half an hour just dead air <laughs> and then like a <gasps> and then nothing <laughs> oh yeah, yeah and it was great. just all 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 like the it was like when you audition if you're listening to isotope or something you yeah. want to listen to audition yeah. noise only uh -huh. <laughs> but it was like manually yeah. done with just like the edited out like mouth oh. noises and breaths that is literally right. my personal hell yeah. that that's a project it, it was it was a great uh great web art project i thought <laughs> yeah i wonder what that guy's doing now Ta Tamara had a thing had a thing that she did um that was a performance art piece um I, I, probably about 10 years ago called breath stop where she had done some voiceover for me at Bong and Dern after, well after you you had uh, left when we were doing it at Bill Series Place Mercer Media, 
and um and uh and it was she and she just took her voiceover from her own like the stuff that she actually got paid for you know like audiobook stuff mm -hmm. and then she just took out all the fr did exactly what you just described so it's just <gasps> <laughs> you know, like literally just breath before everything, you know, and it's it's great. And then she just did like this whole spoken word piece over it and some guitar and various other things. And it was awesome. Did everyone um, have a let panic attack? Let me move attack? on to some questions, John. Okay. Yeah, yeah we they could, did. We could totally talk for a long thing. time about <laughs> bullshit. Oh, we'll do that. Yeah, anymore. we totally could. I'm yeah. sorry about that. So you're, you're, um, I did not really complete, I said from Bob's Burgers, but I'll say, you know, you're, you're also known for Lucy, Daughter of the Devil. Um, you've done a bunch of other stuff. Um, and so the, what the two Bob's Burgers and Lucy have in common is Lauren Bouchard, who I guess you were in a band with. Um, do you want to talk about how, how that came? Let's just talk about the genesis of Bob's Burgers. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm also work uh, working on the the kind of compa uh, it's not really related at all. It's just the same production yeah, company. Um, it feels, Central Park yeah, it is another feels very... show that they. Oh yeah, Central Park. I was going to ask you about that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know you were I, working on that. Awesome. And it's... I just started on the second yeah. season. We're... And, awesome. And uh, so yeah, I, let's see. I I actually went to high school with Lauren. And we okay. kind of kissed in touch over the years. And when we were both in New York, he actually came by Bog and Dern one day. I don't know if you remember meeting him when he oh, cool. had done home movies. I don't remember at this point. But... Um, it was when you had pet ferrets, and he was and he was like oh, super yeah. impressed with the ferrets. There were pet he, ferrets. He, he he loved the ferrets. Um, and uh, let's see. Then he moved to San Francisco and he was in San Francisco and I was just, you know, working for you and for everybody, anybody that I could do whatever, uh, just getting by. And, uh, one, one thing that came up was to do some stuff for this show he was doing for an adult swim called Lucy, the daughter of the devil, which you just mentioned, but, um, I hadn't heard of it at the time. And, uh, so it, it just was like, a I don't know, six months of sound design work and, and audio effects. I did a little bit of music on it, but really not very much. I was okay. Saw a text very cool. Yeah. It's, it's a kind message. Of... I wasn't sure if that was for me. Yeah. From Mark. That was, to see. No, I think that was Mark just missing with all of us. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's funny because I've seen Lucy, the daughter of the devil come up a number of times in the last year or so as a cult favorite that, uh, that people really were like, why did that get, you know, why yeah. did it not get, I, uh, I love that show. And they, I, I haven't, we yeah. haven't talked about it in a long time, but last I heard about it, like there, they, you know, there's perennial discussion of like, is it ever going to come back or we're going to, I don't know. It may be the, the, the interesting yeah. thing was that Adult Swim, ne we waited for so long for a pickup, for a renewal on it, and they never said no. <laughs> to this day, I think they maybe didn't, hadn't said no. Maybe it, maybe you know it's pro it's they a long time now, but yeah, they just didn't get back. But you know, he had a relationship with them, and so it was sort of like it. W it wasn't just like <clears throat> the kind of thing that you you yeah it's it's not the uh, slow no in the mm -hmm. business kind of mm -hmm. thing it's just like it was like this kind of hovering constant maybe but at, in the meantime he got bob's burgers going and it just never came up again so theoretically it could happen i sort of i suppose i would love it i love that show it was, so it was great it definitely yeah, was it the was first time i'd ever heard john benjamin cool. do a voice other than his own yeah <laughs> I'm so impressed with yeah, that. Yeah, right, right. Oh, we we talked about this, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Last week. Um, John, I just I would get I, that that question was not actually in my questions list. So just to try yeah. to move on quickly because I I know you don't you have limited time tonight. Um, so my first question was just you know after ten years of Bob's Burgers, like how much has changed in the show's music, uh, or your process and, and you know your built your your the you know what what you have available to you all that stuff what's changed in those 10 years for you uh tons has changed and it's been some of it has 
been big changes and some of it has been just like slow over time. Um, the, the initial concept was very small, intimate, uh, mm-hmm. kind of junk band almost like lots of like, uh, ukulele and just like percussion and, and uh, small auxiliary percussion and uh, things like that. Fair amount of whirly, uh, in the early days. And then, but then it quickly started growing from that. Um, a couple of things happened. One thing was that certain members of the cast, we didn't expect them to have uh, like a singing kind of persona or mm-hmm. anything, especially uh, John Roberts, who does uh-huh. Linda and, and John Benjamin, for that matter. Both of them have. A, John Benjamin's is more sort of comedic, but but John, John Roberts definitely has like a, this kind of like back pocket uh, Michael McDonald '80s thing that he that he pulled out in the first season, and, and that was not part of the plan of the show, and he just did it on one thing, and then that became like a kind of not that specific thing, but just suddenly we realized like, oh, we can do songs, and so I think the the the, the musical aspect of it really went in a grew with that over over time and uh every episode has a about a 30 second end credit song sequence which has now become kind of like a a strong feature and it's like we have a separate spotting session ahead of the episode just for those and those are like a integral part of the show and it's really like a you know something that we have to but in the first season you don't even know if fox is going to cut away during the credits Mm -hmm. or like you know put you in that little small box on Mm -hmm. the side and say like next on the 10 o'clock news so we didn't even know if they'd play that stuff at all so we we kind of like soft pedaled it in the first season they're very it's like all me doing like versions of the theme that are related to this to the episode some of them are, are more involved than that but like we were just very tentative with it. Just like, is this going to work? Uh, I don't know. And it turns out to be a, like a, a, a keystone of the show now. So uh, that's one thing that changed a lot. And then um, just uh, so did cinematic fun. movie references. They started temping in more movie score and making big references to movies. They have these sort of triptych episodes where the, the kids each tell a story and it kind of refers to some classic movies mm-hmm. sometimes it's like three disjointed ones that have nothing to do with each other one of them was, was like all notting hill um like a british kind of rom-com <laughs> <laughs> but all three kids tell the story Beautiful. and those then they then they get kind of really grand and majestic with the music like you, a lot of more hollywood stuff getting uh thrown at me so that's another way that it has changed a lot and it's really fun because i get to like cool to try all kinds of different stuff i think the the one that freaked me out so because of that the instrument fucking field oh go ahead clayton was uh the national christmas magic it is (laughs) it's a haunting oh yeah yeah and then then things like that also played in (laughs) the national I guess we're fans of the show or somebody was friends with them. And we were trying to kind of get some of these end credit songs <clears throat> to be, you know, promoted on social media and, and maybe like YouTube channel or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so we'd get people to do cover versions of songs. And the one that really took off was the national doing a, a Thanksgiving song a number of years ago. And then, yeah, the, their version of that Christmas magic song is pretty haunting. Ooh. It's like, oh, it's pretty dark. All right then, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm intrigued, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. So how much creative what influence should my do response you have to this be? Right, at least emotionally, <laughs> we're gonna repress a lot of that. But you know, uh, yeah, how, like where your how much creative influence did you have over things like that that clearly come out of left field and sort of are, are total unknowns? Uh. It's very collaborative and and it's kind of case by case uh, different how much how much I am just like kind of 
going with uh, a group pitch or something that's already built into the episode or sometimes some of those things i don't know if uh i think that first thing where john roberts sang not as linda but like more as like a an old 80s singer was just came out of a montage that we did in the first season that was based on like a I don't know, a black exploitation uh, across 110th Street type of song mm -hmm. that we just, because Bob was uh, a cab driver working to save up money to so that Tina could have a 13th birthday party. Okay. That was commensurate with her expectations. Right. And so right. Bob was, uh, and then he ends up getting mixed up with. Uh, ladies of the night and he, so so we kind of did this like you know like you do thing uh with the music and then that song just took, took on a life of its own um and i don't know that we even initially had a plan for a song at all um and just kind of the song that i presented them i don't know i don't even remember that was so long ago how it turned into a song but uh it just uh it was one of those sort of organic group collaboration mm -hmm. improvisations over a long period of time. It was not, n never really improvisations in a room together or anything, although they do that a lot, the cast. Um, other things that will happen is um, I build a lot of songs out of dialogue, and I used to do it more straight out of like straight dialogue before they got kind of into writing songs into the episodes. Because Linda would just like say something, uh, and you know, oh, that would kind of catch my ear. That's like a possible. So if we didn't have another idea for the end of the uh, episode, we would do that. Like, uh, what are you doing? He locked up. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, you locked up. Yep. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> that's terrifying mm. that is terrifying yeah yeah let me, uh, yeah, <laughs> let me uh, man text him real quick now who's, now who's gonna compose the music bob's <laughs> that's there's, there's cool absolutely thing. there's a hundred percent some sci-fi world where that has it's just frozen tonight, you know teddy's asking what are you doing tonight <laughs> oh john we, we lost <laughs> we lost like a Hi. minute of time and it oh it's kind of magical that we lost a minute of time and you just kept going it's amazing i could only He's wish that we it. had the the okay. fourth oh, yeah, you were like... you were you were just beginning to tell that story you guys are now all frozen i don't yeah. see sorry you were... oh. are, are we midstream Shit. should i okay stand by Qu quit and come back again no you're good just keep running I think it, it seems to have leveled out. Maybe there was no? a buffering oh, issue yeah. before. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah. I can hear you. Can you hear us, John? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Indeed. All right. Can. So video might be frozen. No, um, no. He's, I can he's try turning right. my video off. Would you? That play that would help, right? Uh, no, he's he's good. It's, it's, it's the bandwidth on his end, so um, we can still see you, John. You can still interact. We can hear you okay. really, really not... good. So uh, just keep kind bandwidth of bandwidth is and... not happening okay. on this end because I I bumped it up to a a wired connection and it, it seems no, it so only much faster and better. It was doing fine and everything froze for just a few minutes, and now you're back. Everybody is clear. Okay, you're good. But for those few minutes, you literally stopped moving mid sentence and didn't it was like move 40, at all. forty seconds. It was yeah. amazing to see because we were all like, "Well, that takes care like of all the music for Bob." About Forty yeah. seconds. Bob's Bob's batteries have have died. John, <laughs> not Bob. John. Um, so what? Why don't we move on to the next question? Just to uh, say, oh no, John's frozen again. John, he's frozen. No, I'm not. Uh, no. <laughs> All right, so, okay, that better. was really weird because you pretended to be frozen, but you actually were frozen. Uh, okay, so uh, moving on, um, do you want to talk at all? I mean, I think what's that? You have powers. Oh man, there's a huge lag. Okay, yeah, for him. Yes. Yeah, on on on, yeah. Uh, on Chris's, yeah. there's this bizarre thing over the course of the stream. There is like some incremental addition that gets added to every one of Chris's frames on occasion. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> Every time someone tries to tell us. Shall I? Ju I'm going to drop out and jump back in. Okay. Yes. All right, the drive is crazy. <clears throat> while, while he's gone, uh, my, uh, John, my sister, who is an enormous fan of Bob's Burger, uh, says hi. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, hi, she has, she's a huge. She has one of the songs as a ringtone. I don't know. So, just figured I'd run that by. Uh, awesome. Happy to hear it. Thanks for listening. Watching. <laughs> so, am I now in sync? Yes. With yes. my yes. picture. Yes, okay. All right. So, John, you were telling a story. I, you know, I'm sorry. I don't. Do you remember what the story was? Because we heard about the first half of it. Yeah. So we were at, working in Chelsea. And we went to lunch, and we went to <laughs> Whole Foods. Well played, well played. Right. So, uh, hey, so I don't know what I was. Comment. I don't know how much you you lost, and I don't want yeah. to repeat too much of it. But um, it was. It's just been fun to like find musical sounding bits of dialogue and That's build right. songs out of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've got and... to imagine with the the people you're working with the comedic talent in there has got to lend itself to just silly shit songs just things that you're able to go through and kind of have fun with and riff on yeah the diarrhea song for example absolutely <laughs> i know exactly which one you're talking about too it's brilliant it's brilliant work yeah you know what actually john um i asked you um uh earlier yesterday what if you had a couple of favorites do you have any you want to give us a link for something you want to we want to check out we are okay to do that right at the moment yeah yeah it, it is fine um i've i've got uh i've got the behind bob's burgers youtube channel pulled up as well uh, as well as the bob's burgers youtube channel and we can pull from there as well do you, uh, did you have that one that that I uh, sent you yesterday, Chris? The, 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 the uh, that fingers. Which loose? one was it? Because I don't. Yeah, the I, finger. I, I the finger it. one. Yes. Okay. You want to show dancing. that one? Yeah, that one's. Awesome. That's that one. Just is kind of special to me, just because of when it happened and and how it happened and and the musicians on it and stuff. So, yeah, you want to play that? Yeah, play uh, it, and then we'll talk a bit about it, about the making absolutely. of it. Do we want to just hear it, or do we want to actually want to see it? Can we see it? Yeah. Okay. We, we can make that happen. Let's see it. <clears throat> All right. A little bit of, uh, you know, technology magic over here. Just throwing throwing it right in your in your court. Sorry, Clayton. We are going Don't to Don't fumble, be... man. Don't fumble. Just uh, listen to the dulcet tones of my horrible French accent. <laughs> it's incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Sacre bleu. <laughs> okay, so here is <laughs> okay. Bob's Burgers hands dancing. And here we go. For your viewing pleasure. All of my life, I've held it all in, wondering what oh, I yeah. could have been. If all of those things I'm trying to hide jumped out of my skin to the outside, just give me a hand. Yeah, I'm sorry, tired of we, we don't see it in. Give me a oh, hand. No. Look right, at me striding. Yeah. I'm free as the um, breezy. You know I thought you knew that. I thought it was only on the stream. No, we've actually got it going directly to Twitch. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill that and we'll throw it over directly on the stream. All righty. Thank you. Here we go. Watch stream. All of my life, I've held it all in, wondering what I could have been. If all of those things I'm trying to hide jumped out of my skin to the outside. Just give me a hand, I'm tired of hiding. Give me a hand, look at me striding. I'm free as the breezy, a little bit sleazy. My God, it's not easy, feeling so free. Tina! 
Ah, nothing. <laughs> did that whole thing play? I, I just clicked it, on watch. Screen. It did. Holy <laughs> cow. Uh, where the hell did that come out of? Because that's a pretty left field idea. The show idea? Or the just, song? just the song in general. I mean, there this, this feels like there's a pretty tight marriage between the two. Yeah, um, that's one that I, you know, periodically I'll get these songs way ahead of seeing any picture in the episode. And that mm -hmm. one I got like March 2020, like right after lockdown. Uh, and that one we didn't work on until, I don't know, November or something to finally post it. And I, I forget when it actually aired. But sometimes, most of the time, the music I get, I get the full episode and i've got like 10 days to turn around the score and any of the songs really but sometimes with the end credits or if there's like a montage that they re and they've sl slowly tried to work that earlier into the schedule mm -hmm. this song came to me just out of the blue there was no animation yet and it was just dan mintz singing that and they really liked the timing of the way he sang it and also so i didn't get any video but they had kind of a time locked cut mm -hmm. more or less there was a little bit of wiggle room but I, it wasn't like can i have five seconds to build a thing here no they kind of liked his performance there he then ended up retracking it once i got it down but um so then i kind of had to write around it and that happens a lot because like the, there's you know they're pretty good, but you know they're just working with no click and no keyboard or anything. Yeah, yeah. It's, that one actually pretty much stays in in a key, but sometimes I get these get to sneak in these like uh, distant chord modulations just because somebody will sing and they're just improvising a cappella and they'll just go anywhere <laughs> with it. But so that was a fun one that felt like it really ended up coming together. At first, I was like, how is this ever going to sound, sound like a song? Because it was just like piano and voice at first. Uh -huh. And then I so then when we were recording it, it was just after lockdown. And uh, I had never. I had done some overdubs remotely with people, but um, mm -hmm. like horn sectional like that, I've got a multi reed player and a trumpet and brass player that do great, great work. But usually I have, you know, and they'll multi-track, but I usually would have them both come and record together yeah. or, you know, be in the room with them. Same with the drummer. Uh, everybody was at home. We all don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. You know, I don't know where you were last month, but, uh, last March, but uh, but I was right here in, in this chair, mm -hmm. and yeah, you're um, looking so at it was man. really uh, it, it it felt like kind of important to that was like a real show must go on moment mm -hmm. for me personally and just for us because the whole show I had been working at home. So just to back up and ask answer another question that you asked, Chris, when you came to visit a few years ago, you saw our studio that that small space they moved to a much bigger space uh and mm -hmm. got busy with other shows and the movie and i think maybe just because i was i'm an independent contractor and i kind of had this lucky little slot in that small space once they get to a bigger space they needed more room for animators and writers and various things but also like i was not really an employee so it was my time to come home come home so i was working at home for six months before everybody was working at home mm -hmm. so all of a sudden in march they, sh they shut down and they send the whole crew and and animators and everybody home in the period of like 48 hours it was completely nuts and i thought the the wheels are gonna come off the wagon for sure because there's no way that like all of these people there's yeah. hundreds of people involved in this and all, mm -hmm. all the different shows and and even more in administrative staff and everything. But the producers and, and Lauren especially did just like a mind blowing, amazing job of getting it up and running so that people could work at home. And we kept this show 
posting I, through I the am... spring, and and it was it, it just was a shock to me that it could even happen. So I felt like, you know, there's a lot of room for me to put in MIDI and and virtual instruments and stuff. But I felt like it was a time when like I really wanted to like make sure that I kept the musicians that I was starting to work with more and more, you mm-hmm. know, working because they're at home now. They're not touring or anything. For sure. Mm-hmm. And it just really came together and just felt really good to me, that particular episode and song. Um, and so that's why I wanted to share that one. I am I curious. one other thing to say about it, but I can't, uh, just spacing on it right now. I'm, well, while you're thinking about that, I'm, I'm curious how, just to dial in a little bit more on that same sort of topic, uh, I don't know if you were actively working during uh, the writer's strike or not, but I know there were there were so there's some interesting parallels between the writer's strike that killed so many shows um, back when that all happened and this pandemic where we all got shut down for a friggin year and everyone had their panic to go, oh well, we need to trim back on funding and we need to get people separate and you now have a whole industry all, all the performers who unless they had um, a, a specific voiceover gig and the equipment to handle something like that it it all got very very challenging how much from your point of view did that kind of parallel or was it just not even a thought i would have to like i don't really remember us getting interrupted by the writer's strike really so i have to i have to go back and look i i think maybe the way the way it happened was at uh, downtime for the uh, on hiatus or for the show or something. I, I would have to review it. I just don't remember it being it affecting my workflow at all ever. Yeah. And I remember it. We thought it might, and there was a lot of talk about it maybe, yeah. but it never, it never materialized as something that I had to like work around or deal with. Wow. So I, I now um, that you ask, yeah. I want to actually go up and go back and look up the timeline of that and just sort of like compare and figure out like what what was i doing where, where was <laughs> I for the duration of that uh because i because we're definitely a union shop and yeah. didn't like work when we weren't supposed to be working or anything but i just don't remember it coming up at a time when it was critical for us in you mean the, the way fact that this the pandemic thing did and yeah. i remembered what it was that i was going to say a few <clears throat> minutes ago it was mm-hmm. just like it was felt like a double miracle it last spring just because of everybody's hard work and a little bit of luck that we were able to successfully post the rest of those shows but then we get through may, may or june like where we are now we're finishing that season of last year mm-hmm. and starting to do the new stuff everything that we posted we could kind of like take a deep deep breath and feel like oh we we made it we we got those off but those were all in post those were all those had all been recorded and largely animated it was there was still a shit ton of work to do at the, at that time but it was uh can i swear on this oh yes please, please. Uh, so um <laughs> the fcc gonna just don't show your dick yeah, yeah. Mm. that's for no other dick reasons. no tubing. for other reasons no tubing. Though, <laughs> other reasons um but so we got through that and it was like a sigh of relief. But then all of a sudden we're starting to do new episodes. And I thought, well, the post, that's a different story because like 90% of the work is done. But then but they then... managed to go through the whole year and do the rest of the new episodes. And that was crazy because that was that started to get into what we were talking about before. They sent rigs to all the cast and everybody yeah. had like to figure out how to mic themselves and do mm-hmm. it and to their credit like this whole last season sounds pretty good amazing amazing did you have to oversee any of that at home recording stuff or not really i'm not really so much involved in the sound oh dialogue right yeah the dialogue different, different or department. the or the sound mix or, the, or sound effects even i can't mm. i came on as sound effects and music but things grew exponentially and mm. it just became like more than i could really handle mm-hmm. so i'm just i'm just music and i only do half right. of the half of the series 
I did have a question mm -hmm. speaking of right the now. You've got it. Yeah. Um, the, right um, before we started yeah, this, ahead. it's it's a quick question. Right before we started this, you played a little bit of the ukulele, and as soon as you played it, the first thing I heard was the opening sequence of Bob's Burgers. It was the first thing as soon as you played it. Where did you come up with that? I didn't come up with it. That's yeah. Lauren wrote that. Lauren wrote it. Okay. He wrote it, and uh, he played the ukulele and we re-recorded some of it some of it is his some of the ukulele track is his original first demo recording and uh -huh. some of that original percussion uh i play on top of it on drums and bass and other keyboards and percussion and stuff so it's kind of hard to pull it apart oh. at this point but some of it goes back to his original demo that he presented to to fox Back that in answers my question perfectly. Some of it was recorded in his studio, which was upstairs from a merengue bar. And if you had that track soloed, you can actually hear the merengue. <laughs> nice, amazing, excellent. Um, John, I wanted to ask you that uh, before uh, we, we run out of time, uh, you mentioned um, in our chat the other day that there was one thing that you found is a big challenge in writing the music for Bob's Burgers. Do you remember what that was? Making oh. it bad enough. Well, it, it, th those are those are the two companion <laughs> Which is a funny challenges. Way to put it. Yeah, mm. the the challenge of of stitching together like a, a an acapella improv mm -hmm. song into a song. That's that that is that's like the opposite challenge because that's where I have to like take something that's not really intended for public consumption as music and make it into music and, and actually make it good. But then there's a right. lot of times things will come up where either it's just sort of the character of the show. They want to have a still a homespun feel to some of it. And mm -hmm. so sometimes things will be too good, which is something to fight with. And, 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 and well, it's just a, like when somebody says it's too good, you, what, what do you say to that? Like, well, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, there is but, like a weird. But then there's also it, character things yeah. where uh, where the the one that 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 is my favorite memory of this is Fred Armisen was on the show and he was like a, a health department inspector, and they were trying to get on his good side, uh, and by letting him do an open mic guitar and voice thing, singer songwriter thing at the restaurant. And so I had to write songs for him to sing and play the guitar for him to be playing. And the first note I got on my first sketch was, no, no, that's too good. It, it, it should sound bad. It should sound like he has no business holding a guitar. It should sound terrible. And I, this is like fairly early in the show for me. And, and, and like, I, you know, it's hard to not take it kind of personally not personally what they're saying to me, but just like, I don't want to play bad <laughs> on TV right. in front of yeah. people. <laughs> I want to play good. And Maybe. also like I, I can, I yeah. have slightly different ethos in mind of like more like the, uh, Neil Innes, like Monty Python, so where the, the music is like, fully fledged like serious earnest music that's yeah. built in to support a joke but it's i i modulated and i can get with it okay this guy's gonna sound like get the hook get him off the stage but in the moment i was i was having a hard time with it because i kept sending them stuff and i was still at that old space where you and i had lunch across the street at that bar um Mm. and i was oh, yeah. there late mm -hmm. night by myself and i was sending it to things and sending it to people and getting notes back like no nah, it's still it just really should sound bad so i went i just, all right i need a break i went across the street had a burger and a beer and then another beer and then maybe a shot and then i went back and and i was just like okay you guys so i took my guitar and i detuned the b string and i just like tr I plugged it through a, a, an amp, so it's an acoustic guitar going through a little champ, Fender yeah. champ, and <laughs> I just tried to get the ugliest, shittiest sound. Played really hard. I was just like, "Take that! Is that bad enough?" I sent it to them. They were perfect. 
That's stay it. drunk. That's it. Why that was couldn't you do it that way the drunk. first time? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. So, um, Clayton, could you, would you mind playing that? I think, John, what, what should he search for? It's um, Fred bad Armisen. At, bad, at, what? bad at sex. For oh, good at sex. I'm good at sex. You're bad, bad at sex. sex. The sex song, sex. I believe, the Fred Armisen. Oh my God! Yeah, it's sex. it's 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 very short, but it's hilarious, and it's definitely worth checking out. So, uh, guys, when I noticed when the the little thing comes up that says "click the stream," you have to click yeah, the thing to, to actually yeah, see so the stream. It won't play yeah. automatically. Yeah. All right. So okay. it's, it's hey, did it's, you know there are well, five things? It's you're... a little bit of a of a longer um, clip here. So Peace. yeah, you get a little dialogue. Yeah. just to see. Oh, okay. the yeah, that's just, true. Just to be aware here. Sorry. All right. So here we go. So pay attention to the performance, the musical performance, you guys. <laughs> he nails it. You, I, yeah, I listened to John it drunk. before I sent it to you. you, can, you <laughs> I'm not drunk. I'm in, I'm in control. I've okay. been on stage drunker than this. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I can definitely hear that the, the, the B is out. <laughs> you will notice okay. that it's definitely out of tune. All right. I'm and, looking forward uh, to this. Let's go ahead and, and rock this. You can full here. screen it if you want on the right yeah. hand side. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Right of the, it's mm -hmm. the square. See on the right. I don't want to read all right. the comments and say, why is the guitar out of tune? <laughs> don't ever read the you, comments. That's, that's yeah, rookie, know, rookie mistake. Don't read the comments. They're vile. All right. You ready? Yep. I'm a bad man with the master plan and the ladies call me tax. Okay. And the one thing all oh, the ladies know is I'm good at having I leave my shirt on, that's okay, don't make me feel self-conscious, babe sex, 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 sex. When you're done, say that was fun, we might have made a little sun I'm good at sex, you're bad at sex 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 how we doing, Jimmy Pestos? I'm a bad man with the master plan and the ladies. <laughs> so then, I, then for the end credits, Ooh, I got yeah. I was allowed to like uh, <laughs> play out the whole thing, make it make it a little bit better. Well, let's, let's that was my that. that was my follow up question is whether that? or not they like they gave you vindication. Like, did you then get to go full bore with it? Let's go ahead and share yeah, that on at the end. It still was like keep still keep it still keep it not completely polished right <laughs> all right hold on call me Jack, and the one thing all the ladies know is i'm good at having oh uh, 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 sex 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 i'm good at sex i'm good at sex <laughs> i'm very 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 good at sex i am good you are good i can too. hear the word little by little i'm guiding you with my hand in my arms I'm good at sex you're learning quick <laughs> oh were you, my word <laughs> were you Bro. channeling hey ya the outcast song <laughs> Maybe. that's awesome I'm yeah. not even gonna lie there's there's a lot of that that sounded like the violent femmes <laughs> yep I hear that too yeah yeah it does. Yeah. It's, it was yeah. a little bit of that <laughs> John is a very violent, violent man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, Lord. I don't know how much more time you've got, John. Do you have a, another couple of minutes, or how you, how we doing on time? Yeah, I, I can, I can. Oh, you got to go. No, I'm fine for another few minutes for a little while. Okay, you probably can't say anything about it, but I want to ask yeah. you anyway about the Bob's Burgers movie. Bob's Burgers movie. That's hard to say. Um, do you is there anything you could say about it? Probably not. I'm guessing. It really. is. It is going to happen, and it will please all of the fans. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. If Excellent. that is not a, right. a politician's response, I now, suppose I don't that's know what all. It is. That is so beautiful. Yeah. I, no, I really. I've been specifically <laughs> instructed not to discuss uh, it while it's in progress. Yeah. If even if you're Mark Ruffalo, uh, you get in yeah. trouble for saying shit like that. So. Nice, good reference, man. <laughs> the poor guy. <laughs> I know. <coughs> yeah, whatever you do, don't live stream yeah, wow. while it's being so, played. I mean, <laughs> my word. <laughs> my only other question was, you know, I was, I, I wondered whether, I mean, not that you 
who would want to leave Bob's Burgers? I mean, it's the dream job, I can imagine. But if, if, if it ever ended or you had, you know, you, you moved on, do you have any idea where you would go from here? Do you want to do more TV? Are you thinking more film, like cinematic? Um, what's, do you want to get back in a band and earn no money at all? <laughs> yeah, especially now because clubs are doing really well and They're touring so well. seems like a, I want to, I want to, uh, yeah, go on a world tour. I want to, uh, <laughs> no, I I would love to I would I would love to do more animation. Uh, it's really fun doing animation. I like the process. I feel like I kind of have a, a sense of how to. Um, but there's there's some pretty specific things. I'd love to do some live action stuff. I'd also I love doing comedy. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to do some not comedy too to just kind of balance things out. So, I'm curious then to that same end, uh, just because of. Uh, what's his? And I've just dropped his damn name. What's his face from? Uh, well, obviously Bob, and then uh, Archer and Benjamin. Thank you, damn it. Yes, thank You're you. Welcome. H. John Benjamin. John Benjamin. I love that. Have Mark have, Ruffalo. Is Mark Ruffalo? Have they? <laughs> have you like, had the opportunity? Because he works on so many different things. Have you kind of gotten any of that? Like, hey, can you come over and do you know something for us on who who was it or? uh archer or you know any of the floyd county guys i know they're they're totally separate studios yeah that's a completely separate studio right. and separate thing so like it's pretty rare to go with uh with an actor star power or, or, to, or um i suppose it happens but it and it still could happen i'd love to do that but not through that i've done central park through you know bento box is, is producing that so it's kind of more like within a production wheelhouse to okay. kind of like have those relationships sort of turn into new things and that's like a whole different vibe from bob so that's kind of fun and fresh air but it's uh it's a different thing is it is it does it feel stale after 10 years for you bob's yeah not uh there are some things that are uh, a little bit like the that I wouldn't say it's stale, but like there there is a sound and a formula to certain kinds mm. of parts of the underscore. Right. But that I'm always kind of intrigued at ways to try to not reinvent it or like freshen it up too much, but just like make it sound better and mm -hmm. just like work on, on my orchestrations and just, just have that part of it. That's just sort of like a technical challenge to me. So in that sense, it's like engaging, but it's not what drives me. If that's all the work that there was, then maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the songs and the, the, it's the, episode specific parts of the music sometimes there'll be like a you know pretty more involved hollywood type sound mm -hmm. to to the underscore those and the songs give me such an opportunity to do so many different styles of music that i have no business being involved with like <laughs> i did a balkan uh, like a balkan band thing for one thing and i know these guys that are great oh, they are, awesome. they're right wow. over the hill for me i can give you the link to that one you want to hear that um, <laughs> and it's just like the opportunity of getting to work yeah. with people like this mm -hmm. where do i paste this uh if, if you want to um so right above public broadcast there's public broadcast text chat do you see that yeah right above the one with all our names in it on the left it says public broadcast text chat click there and yeah. you just po paste it down the bottom where it says message. Mm -hmm. Perfect. There we cool. go. All right. Uh, Twitter so these folks, guys, or uh, not Twitter. These tweet. guys were great to work with. Uh, they're an amazing, amazing band. And I, I just hired them all wholesale to come be my band for it. And, I, and I'm playing keyboards underneath it uh, to just, just add a little bit of element of like turbo, turbo folk disco you know, Turbo Falcon folk. Disco. <laughs> Turbo Folk. Did you know that was a thing? I, I didn't. didn't know that and, no, because uh, I worked <laughs> with these guys. Yeah, like they they wanted something that had like the the um, 
Borat music <laughs> vibe to it. And, right. and I went to these guys. I had seen them at a bar recently. Uh, Petrovich Blasting <coughs> Company is their name. And they're, mm -hmm. they're an amazing group. I'll send you later a link that you can listen to their music. Um, and they, they were super cool. They, they, they didn't like write the music for me at all, but they just kind of gave me a quick primer on what mm -hmm. the structure of, of Romanian Balkan music is. And so I kind of, I sent them a, a quick sketch and they were like, Oh yeah, you've, you've got it. And then, and then they executed it so well, it just sounds great. And then I said it, well, it's got to get, have that kind of thumping under bass. And they were like, Oh yeah. Turbo, turbo folk is what that's called. That's fucking awesome. And that's like that. It's like the traditional <laughs> wind band, like tuba bass, but it's got like, you know, disco drums underneath it. And if you search for it online, you very quickly go down wow. like this uh, right wing channel of like finding all this like like kind of horrible Balkan War. <laughs> oh lord, stuff. <laughs> wow. And these songs that are you're just like, oh, no. oh this is a this oh, is a no. nice little jaunty little <laughs> balkan groove then you realize you read the subtitles oh this is about war crimes now i feel committed. dirty yeah <laughs> yeah <coughs> all right let's uh let's, anyway let's get this wow. yeah this party started here hey hey yo get it So it's insane. I've, I've got to know. Those guys are so. Those guys are so good. Awesome. With with respect to like the the pacing of the animation behind that, how how much information do you get from production or animations that matter about like okay, so uh, we're we're running this on you know so many frames and we want to get the animation of these people in the background doing the thing past the window they they usually ask me for a, a sketch okay and it's those things are 33 seconds always those and slugs mm -hmm. and so i know kind of what i have to work with and sometimes it's really fun for the da, ba, da, ba, 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 to cut you off midstream yeah but sometimes it's fun for the 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 thing <laughs> to end and then that thing hits um so i i just have to like quickly figure out what the song is going to be sure. and the time and i send it to them and then they animate to that usually Man. every and once in a while i'll get something that i have to conform so your bpm to just can't change after that yeah and that that can get tricky okay. especially if they sometimes yeah. they'll they'll do do it to temp and then i have to write the song to whatever they did it to. yeah okay and so you've but got that one's funny oh, because God. i think it's pretty successful yeah as uh yeah with with dave herman just going yo good yo good yo good yo good <laughs> it's funny and i get it but i my original i actually pitched lyrics for it and it, and it was tr kind of re-summing up the story of the episode which was yogurt somebody stole my yogurt and, <laughs> and i had a whole b section to it and so my son at the time ate a shit ton of yogurt every morning and i used to sing that while i was <laughs> writing it and when i would make his breakfast and so he still has asked me to sing the yogurt song to him nice. but it never exists it, does, it only exists in this house but... how uh how old is the is your son now wow he's seven now but uh he was about three or four when that happened yeah you gotta love those things that then extend beyond yeah. the years and you're like you, you realize that when you're a teenager in high school this is the story that's going in your yearbook, right? <laughs> and and now your song exists yeah. with us. <laughs> now every time yeah. I see that episode, yeah. I'll hear your song instead of the one that's on there. Great. That was <laughs> that was my stealth mission today. To get, well uh, done. Get my well thing, done. My my sketch out yeah. there. But sometimes Shall it go blows the other way because like I'll 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 spin some lyrics that I just think like I'm giving you placeholder. Mm -hmm. This happened today, actually, and I can't say it because yeah. right, right. it hasn't aired yet. But I just, you have the talent did a verse, and then there's 
we need something else. And I know that they're going to replace my thing. So I just throw some stupid thing that I just, uh, but then last night I got an email. I love that. <laughs> like, okay. Well now it's about bears. <laughs> 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 there is a certain amount of magic when shit like that happens. You go, right? yeah, I love I, it. it. It's that's the, that's really yeah. by far the funnest part of the, of the when you just like, what do you think of this? Oh yeah, it's stuck to the wall. Look at that. <laughs> there's there's and it's not rolling down. It's staying there. There's absolutely you just leave we've, it there, wouldn't you? You just yeah. leave it there. You know what that's from? <laughs> Actually, that sounds very familiar. With the odd couple when no. he throws right. the on the wall. Right. Very nice. God, that was ancient. What okay, we're dated show. now. I think the only other time <laughs> know, that I've, I've seen that actor okay. was well, no, he it was in some other movie, but I I watched him in um, Shakespeare in the Park in New York City. Tony something. Uh -huh. Wait, are you talking about the original one? The original Odd Couple? Uh, mm, no, no, no. I'm talking about um. Oh damn it! It's not even the Odd Couple. It's a uh, fucking. Wow, what's his name? He's from. Oh man, come on! You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, the Clayton. producers. Not the producers. Yeah. Oh shit, he's a he's a the foreign what? guy who Matthew, comes in. Matthew they're Broderick. roommates. Not Matthew Broderick. No. Zero Mostel. What? Uh, I'll find it. I'll find <laughs> it. I'll, 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 he's I'll he's got to have to Google. He's using I'll the Google redeem, machine. Yeah, I'll, I'll redeem myself. Nothing. You just you just go and do, <laughs> ignore the man behind the camera. I totally heard what you were talking about, John, and I was like thinking Tony, what's his name from the odd couple and, and the original one from like what the fifties, sixties? Sixties. Yeah. Yeah, I think the throwing the pasta 60. on the wall, that was uh, Jack yeah. Lemon and Walter yeah. Matto. Yep. Oh right, right, right. Okay. Yep. You just leave it there, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's like it's all hard. <laughs> Those two That's were great. such a they were such a lost That's good. That was beauty. Tragic. Such a lost beauty, those two. The Odd yeah. Couple introduced me to flamenco guitar. <laughs> uh huh. With uh, and I'm gonna botch the the name of this one too. Maglawenta. I have no idea who that is. Oh yeah, they Mag said Mag like, Malaguena. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Malaguena. Malaguena. It blew my mind. <clears throat> uh huh. I'd never heard it before. Blew my friggin' mind, and I've, I've since now loved flamenco guitar. <laughs> Who played it? Was it, was it a? Because they had they had like you know the famous people of the day. The tubes. Kind of, kind of, yeah. yeah, the tubes. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I'll tell you in two seconds. The tubes did. They did. They did a version of it. It's awesome. On, on the Odd Couple with Tony Randall. Molly Gaines, Tony Randall. Sir, thank you. Rose. Could not remember his last name. Oh. Yeah. Uh, guitar. Was it Roy Clark? Was it the one with Roy Clark? The. Uh... It might have oh, been. It could have been. Yeah, it could have yeah, been. Yeah, because like, it was Roy one. Clark. Was it Roy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like he was demonstrating his range, right? Because he played. He comes on, he does his bluegrass thing, and and I don't know if somebody sassed him about being like a hillbilly or something, but then he <laughs> then he busts out the Malaguena. Full Mako, yeah. Because <laughs> he was he did dueling banjos too, right? Yeah. Oh, did he? Was it him? I the I the, no. the clip in particular that I'm no. thinking of is uh, that's um guy's name. The whole thing ends with like, well, you know, play us play us something, play us a a tune or whatever. And he goes, well, I tell you what, I'll, I'm gonna play something I want to play. And he just rocks oh, yeah, this yeah, out, yeah. Oh, and you're like, yeah, that's that's what it was. Fuck! <laughs> I got place this on my fingers. <laughs> Wrong <laughs> instrument, but nevertheless. Right. <laughs> Speaking of banjo, I'll just give yeah. you a little like uh, Bob's Burgers yep. banjo Easter egg. There yeah. was one episode where Bob uh, has a fantasy of playing banjo and he buys one and plays it. But I, I do all the playing when Bob's playing it because mm -hmm. it's that, that again, like he can't play. It's mm -hmm. like fingers stuck in the strings kind of thing. <laughs> but in his fantasy, he's like Steve Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. And so I got this guy <laughs> who's a ripping banjo player to come in and do it named bill knopf and uh he's actually done banjo for me on a couple of things i've had a few uh needs for banjo on the show and he told me when he shows up like on a bicycle with a but you know, with a banjo in the in a holster in like kind of like in a holster like in in the trailer like a, like, okay yeah, yeah. yeah. 
the baskets. The trailers, the basket. And I'm thinking, like, is this guy serious? Is he going to be able to play? And he gets in, and he's like, let me see what you... Because I had written it out, because I didn't know what I was dealing with. And he looks at and he looks at the music and he just like reads it off like note for note. But then he's like, "But do you want it like this?" And then he retools it banjo style. You want getaway music? And, he, and it just completely nails it. Can read it, but he just looks like he just <laughs> wandered in from the farmer's market. Like amazing player, but like <laughs> did not expect him to be like a studio cat. Oh yeah, right? yep. And then he said, um, "Yeah, you, did you ever see the Dukes of Hazard?" You know that Benjamin? <laughs> that, that that was me. Oh wow! No okay. way, dude, that's awesome. Oh, awesome. deliverance. Yeah, me yeah, too. That's hilarious. By the way, dueling banjos was Eric Weisberg and Steve Mandel. Thank you. For those who are listening and were wondering about that, uh, and and my it. complete fucking um, aneurysm John, it's been great on air. Do we have any other questions strangers. before we go? Yeah, I should probably wrap it up because oh. there's about to be like right. a, a thunderous um, arrival of a seven-year-old, and, and you're going to hear like you're going to hear sure. how non-soundproof my oh, is. man above me right now. There is a trampoline, and my kids didn't. Regardless of when we're recording, or any, my kids will jump on this trampoline, like holy shit. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. Constantly, no, I'm right there with you. I mean, I do a fair amount yeah. of in the box stuff, or you know, plugged in guitar. But if I'm if I'm using this thing yeah. or this thing, I have to, uh, oftentimes we'll have to go upstairs and say, "Keep it down." I'll get the taser Keep it down. out. The old man's working. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you, but mine mine's usually the one where I have to tell the other people. Um, I'm gonna be screaming like I'm dying, so it's <laughs> just me recording. Don't don't worry. You know, right? Yeah, no okay. You don't have to call an ambulance. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like upstairs. They're like, what? Why do you have yogurt down there anyway? Who stole your yogurt? <laughs> <laughs> and why uh, is it about bears? Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed this. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much, John. You've been uh, yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. It was yeah. great to, to yeah. meet Thank those you very of you much. that I haven't met, and uh, good to catch up with you, Chris. And thanks for asking me to do it. Happy to happy to chat. You know what? But before you go, Amanda, are you there? So that that green box with the with the the icon. Yes. Hi. Hi. That's Amanda Goodman. Do you remember Amanda Goodman? Hey, I saw your name. Amanda on used to do Mandible voiceover Judy at Bong and Dern. Yeah, I, remember, I remember you, and I saw your name on the uh, Mandible Judy stuff, and I thought, oh, is that the same Amanda? Yeah, it must be. Oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. She, she's one of you her voice, She's one of her voice artists. You look artists. like you, you look um, like your head no. looks like a bear's foot or something. Yeah. No, that's not me. I'm the I'm the um, orange uh, yellow <laughs> ochre orange fox with the the oh, generic. Oh. Chris, you said. <laughs> I don't know how to make an avatar on here, so I haven't I haven't made one. <laughs> Sing a Mandy. That's you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I turned you up from that. I'm nice turning you, you back down a little bit. Have you been? Yeah. Good, to, anyway. good to see you. Yeah. Hello, I must be going. Yeah. Um but John, again, thanks, thanks so much. And uh we'll we'll uh, let's be in touch and uh I hope yeah. we'll uh, get out to LA one of these days and, and uh we'll catch up. All right, Great. man. And we're looking forward to to the Bob's Burgers movie yeah. and the rest of the season. Uh, and so, and dare I, mean, I say, next season, yeah. if you if you want those Floyd County contacts, just drop me a line and we'll get you in there. <laughs> Floyd County, I miss. He, he's not Floyd getting County? it. Huh? As he's in with the uh, Archer. Oh, oh yeah 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 yeah. Get me in there. We we get we get some contacts for you there. Yeah, I know a bunch right. of bunch there of animators go. in there. Make it happen. Sounds what good, man. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, thanks. Good night, guys. Great meeting you, John. Bye, John. Take care. Bye. Okay. Take care. We're gonna carry on, so um, we'll we'll uh, yeah. So Jaron, so, although uh, we guys, we only have um, about what fifteen minutes until now you we go have, to gym. We have, and also, uh, it would be yeah, a good I've time. Yeah, I've got to get out of here in about 15 re, minutes. So. Yeah, reset anyways, because you're lagging again. I need to get a sound effect for that.
Laggity lag lag lag. Lag. Well, now you're back on, see? Yeah, awesome. Um, Thanks. If if people are well, it's a three minute thing. I was gonna say I would I will pull up the Roy Clark now that we've already wow. We'll, we'll probably get to yeah, that we might get that we uh, you know this we'll stuff all ends up at youtube right so yeah they may they don't... may frown on that yeah. so i won't do that one yeah I don't... Uh, they get really pissy about that those yeah. yeah those of you in the stream though go check out the roy clark on um on the odd couple because it is mind-blowing it is yeah just i remember so it freaking cool it, when, when you mentioned it i was like oh yeah that episode i oh, mean i God. i must have seen every episode of that show like five times because you know, it, it was on like I think it was on right before Twilight Zone um, every night on WPIX New York local station, and it's just like you're falling asleep at, at in front of the TV. You know, yeah. I probably had like a little black and white portable or something. You know, <laughs> and that would come on, and it was like, yes, comfort, comfort food TV. Dude, I was watching that stuff on a Grundig. Let's, this is the only the old guys are going to know what that is if you even oh. remember what a Grundig is. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was trying to remember what is the name of that show that Roy Clark was on, that variety Yeehaw. show. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Oh my Yeehaw. God. Yeah. I forgot all about that. And as soon as you said that, I was like, wait, what is that? And who else was on that show? Buck Owens. Um yep. Buck Owens and Roy Clark. And um, you know, it's funny, uh I grew up like with that stupid show, like being on and I was like, you know, it was so far afield of me culturally and my my youth. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. in the progressive rock and that was like like what I thought of as really commercial country music. Mm -hmm. And and what I didn't know was the history of those guys. They are both unbelievable badasses. Mm -hmm. Like both Roy Clark and Buck Owens. And also amazing people. They were like, I think it was Buck Owens was like super um uh helpful to other like younger uh, musicians in the country music scene. The whole and yes, they helped them come up and uh, but I, I've lear recently learned this from um, a great podcast called um, Cocaine and Rhinestones. If you guys want to hear a music history podcast that's impossible to put down, it's really good. good. It yeah, it's all about the history of country music, which I, you know, I, I think I like, you know, three country artists mm -hmm. in total, mm -hmm. you know, and they're George Jones, Hank Williams, and okay, maybe Tammy Wynette. I don't know. Maybe, a, mm -hmm. maybe more than three. Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre's <laughs> awesome. There are some, there are a lot, actually Willie Nelson, but, but, um, you know, to learn like the history, of, like the, where this came from and, uh, you know, it's kind of amazing. And, and the, the lives of these people, holy shit. I mean, like the, um, the Judds. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. There's a, there's a family with a story, man. I mean, I oh, mean, yeah. a real <laughs> tragic, yep. funny, like, heartbreaking it's an amazing story really amazing huh. story there's a reason yeah. they sing country my friend oh yeah, yeah exactly exactly uh that is true and then there are other other country stars that you know like um who was it the woman who did harper valley pta um i can't remember her name oh i i hear the song in my head i know billy, what you're talking um, about no not billy what the hell's her name ah god i can't believe i've forgotten google it harper valley pta yeah i'm embarrassed Gosh. What was what was that? Was that was that a um, a sitcom or what? What was Harper well, it Valley? Became TV, it became uh, it became a TV show based on the song. The song was a hit. Oh. Yeah, Jeannie um, C. Riley. Uh, Jeannie C. Riley. But um, wait, is that the one? God. But I remember I, that. It was, it was God, written. God, I have not there. heard heard of Harper Valley PTA since back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was apparently written so, you know, by Tom T. Hall. Yes, Tom T. Hall. So there's a whole uh, three episodes on Harper Valley PTA in Cocaine and Rhinestones. Three whole episodes just on that one song Jeez. because it was done multiple times. Um, it was from different points of view, the singer um, uh, and the writer and the producer. Um, but um, what I was actually thinking of, I think, yeah, was Ode to Billy Joe, which was a, a similar hit that I think – I can't remember. I can't remember now which was based on what. I think Ode to Billy Joel was basically a kind of a cheap knockoff of Harper Valley PTA. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the way it went. I hope I'm not doing anybody wrong here. But um, Bobby Do Gentry, wrong, man. Was just the singer. It. Yeah, the singer of it was this woman, Bobby Gentry, and she's like like got a genius IQ, and she she like you know like just basically became her own boss and just like you know, just basically cut herself out a really good living 
and bought and sold companies and just was like this, you know, badass kind of corporate exec after being a country singer, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's just, it's just really weird the, the, where these people start and where they end up. And it's then really interesting. Cake wrote a song about her. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. I don't think that's actually accurate, but. Uh, it's close enough. I, I get the, I get exactly what you're talking about there. I always so, felt like too, because I, I grew up on a farm in a foster home of all things. And yet my style, the music that I ended up getting into, because I mean, they, they kind of were really into it was like Floyd, ACDC and, okay. you know, uh, the Beatles as a child. But I, I feel like I did miss, and I'm not a big fan of country. I mean, I still, the man in black is still probably the only one that I really listen to if I listen to any yeah. country at all. But there's there's a whole genre of music that I never got exposed to as a child, so that it didn't really infect me like mm -hmm. a lot of these other types did. So I, I can see where that comes from. So I'm I'm curious yeah. in the same end, like would you put like the Leonard Cohens in with uh, country? Because the the aesthetic is very similar. That's folk. The, the material it's is more very like similar. folk. Yeah, I think it's folk music. Yeah, I mean that, I mean think most people would would agree, but I I you know I guess it's a matter of opinion. Um, also, he's Canadian, right? So, uh, not that you can't have Canadian country music. You certainly can, but um, what but, you, you know, saying? Canada ain't got same. no country. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think mean, like, gets... what, what's Joni Mitchell? That's a that's a much harder question, right? Oh. Joni Mitchell is like it's, folk and country yeah. because she she yeah. does and that yeah. whole over the edge thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, like, I think you could make a, a stronger case for her being jazz more than uh, the other two. Right? Okay. You yeah. Know, so, it's it's even like it's kind of hard to say, but I mean I think there are definitely people. I mean she did play the Grand Ole Opry, so yeah. maybe that's what determines whether you're you're a country star. If or not. you played you know, the Opry, she did it when she was like, yeah, when she was like sixteen or something. So another 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 Canadian, right? Um, Neil Young, also Canadian. There are a lot of Canadian folk singers. But you know, I think it has everything. Yes, it it still comes down to whether or not what you're playing at the time, because I mean you look at someone like Ministry. For instance, Ministry started out as kind of a best country band I know. Right, well, they were like <laughs> seriously poppy, like their their first couple of stuff seriously poppy, and then they turned. Where into... we go with that? I was like, right, wait, but wait. it was what? <laughs> How did I get to Ministry? Because yeah. of the fact that whatever you're playing during a specific <laughs> era can yeah. can really you know nail you down as far as what type of music you are. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's true. That's too fucking funny. It's too I funny. know. <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I think it's interesting. I mean, any of those. Oh, well, they're Canadian. Like you look at, at Canada as far as the industries that they have and a vast majority are logging, uh, ranching, like all these these things that typically Americans identify as like, oh, no, it's a cowboy lifestyle. We haven't had cowboys like that in yeah. outside very specific areas of the United States in a long fuck off time. Canada, meanwhile, yeah. has not stopped. I mean, yeah. it's it's uh... <laughs> a very very large part of Canada is wilderness. Yeah. So yeah, so that's probably part of it. Um, and very and cold. Just, yeah, very cold. Oh my god! Man, you you say that we've talked about that. But they're yeah. just like they're just two ends of the extreme. I mean, you go to, to any of the forests in that, um, like in uh, British Columbia, for example, and the yeah. summers in their grasslands, yeah. they'll hit a hundred degrees, no problem. Yeah, zero mm -hmm. zero uh, rain the whole bit. I mean, it's insane. And then you get down no, it's to more like 40. yeah, yeah, it's more like Alberta, Alberta, and yeah. you know, like up around the middle of the country and the um, and the north. Um, uh, like Winnipeg's already really cold. Uh, in the winter, it's unbelievably cold. Mm -hmm. I was there in February, and it was oh my god, it was bone chilling. Like, you, you, I never was warm the entire time I was there. You know, it was crazy. Um, I loved it though. It was really wild. Uh, what a crazy, big, weird city. It's so they have so much space there that mm -hmm. everything is really spread out. Mm -hmm. Like the houses are gigantic. The streets are really wide. It's just strange. It's like, um, I mean, not all of the streets, but a lot of them were quite wide. What town did you say? Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Oh, Winnipeg. Hmm. 
it's it's one of my favorite towns mainly because of um of um guy madden the direct film director is from oh there. really yeah. And he made oh, a great right. film called My Winnipeg, which is about his upbringing, a very huh. fictionalized, ridiculous version of his upbringing. But, um, yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, uh, yeah. Wow. What a bizarre. Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh, we definitely, yeah, we... <laughs> the fact that we both are going to go for the friggin' national anthem. How do you not? How do you not? Oh, I, you know, I almost like went right over it with the Blame Canada song, and so I yeah, kind of let that one go. Yeah, Canada. it was a great song. Oh. Chris, um, <laughs> do you see a relationship between Guy Madden and the Quay brothers at all? Because they oh, yeah. are, they're buddies. Yeah. They're all buddies. I, I imagine they would be, yeah. They're both really weird, let's put it that way. And from a okay. layman's point of view, they're very strange. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think of them as very similar in a lot of ways. I mean, the Quay brothers, obviously much more on an animated side. Um, mm -hmm. Have the Quay brothers done live action? Yeah, they had, they did. They did one. Um, the piano tuner of earthquakes. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I think it was that is a title. Oh, you know what? That was actually showing when we were at the machinima, um, festival thing at um at moma they were there the day or so after you you were there you just missed them yeah momi right american museum of the moving image right yeah the one, yeah. the one in queens yeah i remember that um i have a lot of pictures from that right um yeah huh. god i totally forgot i mean i don't remember much about that weekend besides meeting <laughs> a lot of people and um you guys being there and that was awesome actually john keith was there Really? Yeah, yeah. John was there because John is, uh, we didn't even talk about this, but John is the co creator mm. of The Spartan Life. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. In which I, which uh, Amanda also voiced a character. Yeah. Um, but he, um, it's not really that relevant to Manable Judy, but um, it was mm. a Mishima talk show. We've talked about it before, I think, on the show. But John, what? Uh, oh. I, yeah, we came up with the, I, I came up with the idea, but really by bouncing things off of John <laughs> and him, like, you know, just whatever coming up with jokes and i would throw them in there huh. but, yeah. what year was that that machinima festival at momi that would have been 2007 yeah 2007 oh uh, no or sorry. Two, 2005 to seven somewhere well, in there it was two it maybe it's 2006 because it was the second oh, one that I, okay that we, won. we won something at two the first two uh-huh so one was 2005 and the second one was 2006 i wait no that's not right the first one was 2000. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was 2005 and, and the second was 2006. And, oh, OK. And, yeah. Um, and that was a really fun one where the Rooster Teeth guys were there and um, we all got to meet each other and everything. And it was. Hmm. Yeah. And um, there was a lot of public drunkenness. It was really exciting. I guess. Oh, I don't think I was around for too much of. Yeah, that I part. It was, but it was one, maybe just on the closing night. I think you were. Were you only there for one night or two nights? I don't know, but I do know that, um, yeah, I, you know, I went the day after to see the piano tuner of earthquakes right. and then, and, and reunited with the, just, you know, said hi to the Quays. So. Oh, wow. They were great. They were there. Great. They were there. Yeah. And I, I couldn't believe that the, just the, the small worldness of that, that being this at Momi right after this thing that I was doing with you guys. Yeah. That's really funny. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. I really love their stuff. Um, Street of Crocodiles is one of my favorite things ever. That's, That's the, my... the the one that put them on the map. Yeah, exactly. If you guys have never seen this, uh, look it up. Street of Crocodiles by the Brothers Quay. It's Q-U-A-Y, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That sounds um, very familiar. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty well-known experimental film from the 80s. But it's uh, it's experimental, at, you know. It's a it's pixelation, right? It's uh, stop right. motion. Stop so motion, it, yeah, yeah. Stop motion, and um, um, they're just as much into stillness as they as they are about motion. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. it's their animation is so cinematic, and they're so influenced by um, live action filmmakers mm -hmm. that I think. It's uh, then they'll do this wonderful, you know, little bits of magic here and there with the animation. But it's not all it's it's less about that than so many stop motion filmmakers are. Mm -hmm. 
Were they about, the ones that ended up working with Tool? No, that's 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 sort of. I think I think a lot of people thought that I, I, that's Tool. The Tool video was influenced by. Okay. There's a lot of people who've been influenced by the Quays. Yeah. Got it. But you have to truly be a real artist to. They're like they're fine art, you know. They're they're. I think a lot of people miss miss might yeah. you know try to be imitate imitating but they they there's nobody can really touch what they do yeah they're kind of, people get the shtick but they don't get the the you know the the crux of it got it anything. i think um i believe the street of crocodiles has some references to Buñuel, right Buñuel, luis Buñuel. could be could be so. if but... i remember correctly there was some references to uh, oh, Shannon Blue. oh. Uh, yeah uh, which is one of my favorite films and, and he's uh, he is my favorite director yeah but yeah uh they're they're cool and guy madden man wow yeah he's I, he's amazing i haven't seen his films yeah you i man you, it, the thing is he's got a very very big um of of work and you can't just jump into it because mm -hmm. every film is different um some of them are ridiculously funny mm -hmm. um, in a really absurdist way and yeah some of them are really serious and tragic Probably the most accessible one is called The Saddest Music in the World. And oh. it's got Isabella Rossellini in it. And one huh. of the guys from Kids in the Hall, and I can't remember his name, one of the, the stars of Kids in the Hall is is the male lead. Oh. And um, it's ostensibly a drama, but it's so absurd and over the top. I mean, the, the plot is... Um, oh, I've got to go. But um, the plot of this movie is, uh, is that um, there's a beer... Um, brewer in somewhere up way you know up around winnipeg or whatever in the in the tundra of canada yeah and, um, and they stop they, they they're they running on hard times so they have a contest to create the saddest music in the world i don't know why how they come up with this um but it's it's really and like if you lose you go down this log flume full of beer and end up in a beer tank oh and, um, <laughs> it's really it's really strange and they're um Isabella Rossellini is the heiress to this fortune of this brewery and she's yeah. got a, a she lost her leg and her replaced leg her fake leg is made out of glass and it's it's clear right it's a clear oh glass oh my god leg. interesting and, they, yeah. and it's full of beer <laughs> like it, it's like a like a advertising gimmick i guess and yeah. there's one scene where somebody drinks all the beer out of her leg it's just it's amazing <laughs> wow <laughs> Yeah, so there's one that, quick thing i think i i think i remember either reading or hearing yeah. something where the quays said one of the differences is that guy madden has a sense of humor and that they don't <laughs> yeah guy madden <laughs> definitely has a sense of humor that's really yeah. funny for them to say that, <laughs> it's, it's something okay. like that uh, guys on that note i've got to drop out so please mm -hmm. please carry on and have fun i've got to go so i'm going to my stream for the here now festival um i'm going to be on a panel um immediately i actually at 11 o'clock so when you're done if you want to um let me see i'll, I'll yeah where can we watch do you have a link, link? Yeah. let me uh link, yeah. see if i can get that for you really quick because i I'm think is really... it is it um is it for sort of content and i say contest is it for uh convention goers only no, it's it's open to the public to to watch. Nice. Um, you just can't interact, and you can't be in the breakout rooms or any of that mm, stuff. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to send you this one, and if this is not it, I'm sure you can find it based on this. Um, but I really do have to go, unfortunately. Go go go. Okay. It's thanks. Good night, all. Night. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy the you guys Yeah. Enjoy the panel, man. Have an awesome, an awesome time. Thanks. Yeah, man. Enjoy. Thank you for everything tonight, guys. Take Bye. care. Bye. <clears throat> that was exciting. That's, that's gonna be a really cool panel. Yeah, that's that's gonna be fascinating. I think it was just a really cool. This whole thing has been really good tonight in general. I mean, it's it's been the fattest amount of people we've had in here in a while. Yeah. Like last week, what do we have? Four. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was really good. It was fun. Gotta get. Um, <laughs> I, I'm. I gotta try and figure out how to get all of like the the play stuff to show up in the stream for sorry to show up in the discord for everyone to, to watch while also playing it to the the streamers um because that's a whole but it's kind of a thing. nightmare i think the only way to do it is to literally stream it but mm -hmm. you there might be a separate way that you could set it up because i mean you can set up um 
in like you see how you've got a music channel in here mm -hmm. you can actually set up a bot that searches uh youtube for you when you type in a search algorithm and it's literally just like exclamation point search and then it'll give you a choice of like 10 things mm -hmm. and then when you choose something it'll play the audio automatically in whatever you know channel you're in so there might be a way to do that video wise gorgeous you could just literally just look for you know bots in discord bots there's a whole ton of them man mark you gorgeous yeah mark you, you were so distracting earlier man what the hell Jesus. I'm uh, I'm I'm jealous of the beard, man. I can't grow a beard to save my life. Yeah, I used to not be able to grow a beard. Yeah, uh, me my... too. When I was like twelve. Oh, <laughs> see, that's not nice. My dad, <laughs> at, at I'm sure about the same age, uh, could grow a beard like fucking Santa Claus, and it I look like a cat with mange. So you know. <laughs> now mine mine comes out like that for like two weeks and then it just stops that's it it doesn't go any farther oh yeah it just stops further than this it goes a little bit it goes like another inch or two but and then like i gotta yeah it just gets out of control yeah no well and the worst part is is that i actually have more hair on my face than it and it looks like because the hair is blonde like yeah. a combination of blonde beard uh. and every now and then like i'm holding these like invisible comfortable too so I I think uh you and I probably have the same problem. As soon as you start growing a beard, it just looks like your face sparkles. Cuz the light I'll go with that. Yeah. The, the light yeah. just catches the uh sort of the hairs and because they're so blonde or they're so red, it just lights up and you're like, "Well, I'm not from fucking twilight. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just don't have a lot of pigment. Thank you." So, um, we're not still doing the live. Yeah. 100% are. 100% are. Uh, you are still live. Are we, allowed, are we allowed to talk about, like, Billie Eilish or whatever? Uh, like, have you ever, do you guys know what's happening with that? I don't know what's happening with that, but I can do some quick research. Um, I'll give you the, the rundown and, you know, while you do research. But she's under fire because when she was, like, 13 or 14 or something, I don't know. Uh, when she was, like, super young... She did like she mocked. I think she mocked an Asian accent, and she was just caught doing some apologizes incredible. for lip syncing anti-Asian slur. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, like that. But yeah, and when you're and like honestly, 13 years old. What are you thinking? Yeah, and another thing is that like people are really mad at her, and I get it. It's not like I'm not. I'm not like oh shit. Um, she should be her career should be over, and it's like well let's let's take a few steps back and realize that she was a teenager and that even as adults, we all do regrettable shit. Yeah. And like, I'm only 20 and look, I'm recently like, there's been giving me a lot of anxiety because I really want, I mean, I want to be a, well, a famous voice actor, but like, I want to be a well-established voice actor. <laughs> That's basically. probably a better and one. I'm worried like one day they're going to, like they're gonna see like an old text I said and look like yeah of course I regret a lot of the things that I said I used to be like a huge conservative I used to say and believe like abhorrent shit when I was mm. younger and like I've grown and like I don't know I feel like people are really unforgiving nowadays and it's like, look well, I don't think yeah. Billie Eilish's career deserves to be over I think that she did dumb shit when she was a child right so and here's the other here's the other challenge is that i mean and i don't i don't know the context here because i i haven't seen it uh, and i'm just looking at sort of yeah, what the washington you post says but you have to do before i start the the challenge that you run into here and i don't i don't condone racial slurs and so on but especially when you're talking about um being a voice actor you may get asked to do any number of different accents um i had uh i had an audition <clears throat> once upon a time for uh, a sort of a kung fu novel so it was all set in some fictional mm -hmm. asian thing right it wasn't china it wasn't japan it wasn't vietnam it was some fictional thing uh, and i the request in the notes was to have a um a couple different asian accents and so Ooh. i said okay cool well, i'll do it and so we i have you know the light asian accent and the hard asian accent and depending on 
who you are, you might see my doing as a bald white guy, certainly, uh, my doing an Asian accent as really offensive. Bald, the, the t- people. Dude, it's a, it's a thing. I'm like, I'm not a fucking skinhead. I just don't have working hair follicles, you right. jerks. Just leave Although, them alone. Fun, fun side story. The, when I saw, <laughs> I, I got home from a family reunion cruise once upon a time. I was 24. Uh, and I had, I still had enough hair that I was growing it out at that point. And I saw the pictures and you could see the very bright shine of the lights through my hair. And I went, okay, it's time. Time so to I, shave it. So yeah. I shaved my head. Well, so at the same time, I had just moved into this rental uh, that had a big chunk of property on the side that was all overgrown. And I wanted to build a fire pit. So I've, uh, I'm wearing some military pants because they're, you know, the ones you can tie around the ankles. So I'm not getting like ticks and whatnot crawling up my legs. Right. I got some military boots because they're rugged. I had a yep. bunch of nice shoes. I didn't want everything. And it was hot because it's in Georgia. And so I have a, a white tank top on. Uh, lo and behold, I don't have a shovel. And so I say, well, fuck it. I'll go to, to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever the hell it is. And uh, I'll pick up said equipment. I can already see where this is going. So I go in. This is the, the day after I have started shaving my head. Uh, I've never been anywhere else in public without this. Uh, and people are being really weird around me. They're either being super nice uh, and kind of scared or super, like, uh, standoffish, and I'm like, I don't understand what the hell is going on here. And I go to walk into a gas station to uh, buy, like, Red Bull or something, right, after I've got a pickaxe and a shovel over my shoulder. <laughs> and uh, these these two black guys are like, uh, can we help you? And I catch a picture of myself in there. I catch a reflection of myself in the uh, the glass, and I go, oh, fuck. Uh, yes, I would like to purchase this Red Bull, please. <laughs> so I, go, I, went, I went home, and I never dressed like that again because you have to worry about the optics. <laughs> yep. That's what we call the behavioral analysis unit. We, oh, my we're gonna word. Have a, we're going to have an issue coming up soon. So to the same end, I mean, I think that <coughs> you don't know what you don't know. What's the phrase? Yeah. Uh, no better, do better, right? Mm-hmm. I don't. I mean, like there, there are certainly some sins that you wouldn't want to forgive, but that's not to say that look, we're all human. Yeah, but those are reserved for like committing a hate. Like, right, I don't fucking think, war crimes and shit. Right. I don't think like okay, like let me like I don't think doing. Well, not anything, but doing most regrettable stuff, especially, mm-hmm. especially when you're a kid, um, is worth people. And I see the comments on this, and I'm and I'm horrified. Mm-hmm. People think that she's a white supremacist. I'm like, you think she's a white supremacist for that? Yeah. I don't know, man. That's a very specific type of behavior, but and and you're, that's a pretty big claim. Yeah. I don't know if. That, I don't know if that means that. And you're right. Like, no better, do better. I mean, yeah. if you... I really, truly don't think that there is any moment in your life where you can stop being a better person. And you can stop... Oh, for and sure. And I don't think that the people who are making these very big judgments... Um, but I get it. Like, I understand where they're coming from. People are making these very big judgments. Like, I don't think they understand that. Like, they're not well, even giving people till they... the age of 12. There is an overall thing that you have to keep in mind because the same thing is happening to you that's happening to the people that they're making those comments. Their vision is becoming narrowed to that one particular incident and yours is too in this specific instance. They're not looking at the overall picture and they're also not taking into account the fact that in time, nobody's going to care. With well, time, it's yeah. all gonna it's all gonna pass away because there was an instance, and I don't know if you remember this, Clayton, but you remember the band Evanescence? Yeah. Amy Lee had a huge thing back when Evanescence was just starting out, like after the first couple albums, where mm-hmm. there was a big thing where she was supposedly tied to child trafficking. Mm-hmm. Do you know anything about that, Mark? Do you even know who we're talking about? That's one. That's one of the. That's that's one of the unforgivable stuff Clayton was talking about. That's right, not... but do you know who we're talking about? Um, you said Evanescence, Evanescence. Amy Lee. 
Evanescence. Those are the people who like wake me up. Yeah, right, but see, that's life. what I'm saying is that you don't know really. You you know who we're talking I, about, I but know, the internet. I know that one song because it became a meme, but right, um, but see, that's what I'm saying. In time, none of this is going to make any difference, and especially in this instance where it's literally this one thing that once people point out repeatedly, she was 13, man. Well, Thirteen. Yeah, and there's and there's more. There's more than just that. Again, not to condone racial slurs and so on, but um, no. you, you do have you. Do, the internet is a vile place. It will take yes. and make extremists out of anything. I mean, within mm-hmm. within the vast majority of heated arguments, which doesn't take much to to start on the internet. Nope. Uh, within five comments, someone is comparing you to Hitler. Yeah, it will happen yeah, every time. It's a rule in in the same sense that if if there is a thing that exists, there is also pornography that exists about said thing. Rule thirty four. Yeah. It just is what it is. So I mean, I I don't know I, again context. I don't know any of the context in this apart from what I'm reading right now. But uh, you know, it being a, a video uh, of her when she was thirteen or fourteen mouthing a word from a song. Uh, that used to be a derogatory term, and you know, I certainly, I certainly get it. I've also, um, I've also sung, you know, in my car, rap at the top of my fucking lungs, and we've all done things rather, like, I, and I don't think, and I think, like, I see comment, and one of, like, one of the comments, not to get too off topic, one of the comments I saw was like, I'm just saying. When I was 14 years old, you'd never find a video of me doing that. And it's like, yeah, because you were raised correctly and you were raised to be a very polite young person and more importantly, not to say regrettable dumb shit on camera yeah. of all places. Meanwhile, the, you weren't internationally <laughs> famous. <laughs> right. Yeah, that too. And the, 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 how would you say, the judgment that you hold for yourself is not you you the moral compass you have for yourself and the moral compass that you're going to bestow upon other people yeah. are, are going to inevitably be two different things yeah people are going to have different morals than you i grew up like when i was 11 i was like on xbox and everybody there was shouting incredibly i'm not going to go into detail obviously but it was incredibly derogatory well, and racist. gross Dumb, yeah, dude, right? I'll I'll go there because you're absolutely right. Every every Xbox that played Call of Duty uh in Even when they today, were eleven you can run into some lobbies. It's how I still how yeah. I'm gonna fuck your mother, uh and how there's yeah. a <laughs> I'll I'll pee on her poop hole, like cause you're eleven and don't have a fucking clue what you're talking about. These are all things that you grow out of because you grow up. And you, not not that it excuses the behavior at the time, but look, you, in a very literal sense, you are not even the same person. What is it? every seven years, your skeleton is entirely replaced. Your yep. brain doesn't even have access to your prefrontal cortex until you're like twenty five. So you're you don't even you're have the yeah. full access to your own moral compass until well into. And out of your adolescence, it just, it's, it's a, people want a reason to get pissed off about something. They, they gotta have a thing to be distracted by. I got sent an audition for, uh, somebody who was doing a animation for some, there's some kind of a meme going around having to do with a trans woman. Okay. I don't know any, I don't much about it, but they wanted me to do the voice for it. And it was super derogatory and I turned it down. It Straight derogatory up. in the sense that it was it was trying to bring light to that sort of thing, or no derogatory, derogatory in the sense that it was making it was using Un- the word oh. like tranny, and oh. you know the stuff that that you don't want to be associated with if you have any Make sure. yeah even for a character I'm not going to do that I'm just not yeah you know I'm a little bit too publishing disgusting yeah it's a thing though I mean well so so that is a question right so in um. In a, in a short story that we do, so for, for Novus Opera, we've got a, a collection of short stories called Garfield's Crossing. It's all set in North Georgia mountains. There is racism. Racism a thing. Um, I don't, I don't, it's, not, it's obvious that that is still an ongoing problem. And so some of our characters use derogatory uh, and, and racial slurs. 
<clears throat> and then I to go like ahead and different though. Well, so so it gets to the, that question, right? Part of it was when we went through and we decided to do a full voice cast. I was like, well, sh I have this now moral dilemma of when I did the book on tape version of it, I said all the things because I wrote all the things, and I I felt at least to some degree like okay, I have that responsibility. But now I'm asking someone else to say this shit, and you're like, all right. Meanwhile, uh, one of our actors, um, she, uh, she's in a mixed, uh, mixed race marriage or, or, or relationship, or however you'd like to say it, um, and she got an audition to be this in a, in a fairly popular show to be the racist neighbor, um, and she's like, no, I'm not, I'm, no, I don't want to be that, I don't want to occupy that role, and I don't want that to be a part of my life. There is. There are stories that do involve that kind of thing. So there's a weird, it's a weird continuum. And I think that everyone's going to have their own personal taste on it. I think there's also, you know, there are things that just are, are inexcusable. I don't think you can just say, no, this didn't happen and ignore that it ever existed. But yeah, man, thir 13, she's 13. Don't, right. don't, I think don't, don't yeah. dredge that's up the past. That's sort of un unforgivable stuff for the Kevin Spacey stuff that happened. Right. Yes. In the family. Yes. Did and, you take advantage and, of someone who didn't have the ability to, to say no? And, and Right. Or, or Harvey Weinstein no. or, exactly. or exactly. you know, Bill Cosby. There's um, definitely places where it's you you can point to it and definitely say. Yeah. That was done for You probably be like, yes, this is worse than, this is the worst thing ever and it never got and and that's that like that's, <clears throat> that's fair and like those people should well not only not have a career but those people should also be in prison Which but they yeah are. what i'm what what i don't understand is is how like so people like understand that there is a, a human like we kind of all share a similar moral compass where like if you do this nobody's done but if you do this, it's like we're gonna end your like. If you do something bad when you were young, we're gonna end your career. And it's like, well, hold on, let's tap the brakes a little bit, dude. Um, let's find out if you know maybe she was brought up bad or maybe like. And even then, like even if we find evidence to suggest she knew she understood right and wrong to the fullest extent, sure. which she definitely didn't. She was still fourteen years old. But, really? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it wasn't, I think, said in any way to intentionally harm someone. She's, from what I'm reading here, she's fucking around yeah, on a, that's a video. She's not like... That's a whole other thing <laughs> that, people, that people ignore is, is the difference between saying regrettable things and then saying regrettable things towards someone. Yeah, using it That's as a weapon. That's where it's yeah. even worse. And, and and people don't really seem to understand that there is a massive difference between doing something like be, like being a white supremacist and then saying regrettable and racist things yeah. are, and I know that this would shock Twitter, are two very different. They're two very different. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay, a couple, a couple of points really simply. One, first of all, giving it as much attention as everybody's giving it is what's making it so big. Probably. Okay. Two, the moral compass that you think exists in most people doesn't. I would agree on that as well. And I three, think mob majority mentality. Does, but... Right. But mob mentality, that's, that's always a thing on the internet. It's the same thing as if you go back and you look at something as simple as like, you know, the old Frankenstein movies where the mobs got the torches and the pitchforks and somebody points at the monster and starts screaming, monster, 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 and everybody just starts rushing at it. Mob mentality is the same thing here. So if somebody suddenly says, oh, they're a white supremacist, somebody's like, what, white supremacist? And then everybody just charges. Right. So this isn't as big a deal as everybody's making it out to be, but because everybody's making it into a big deal, it's becoming a big deal. Well, it's a slow news week. Yeah. That's it. Until somebody else says something horrible, this is this will be the thing. Yeah. There's also, I, I mean, I do... go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say there is something to be said for even regardless of um, what someone said or what someone did, there is probably an argument to be made for 
the separation of the art from the artist. <clears throat> Obviously, there are some situations like uh, the Cosbys and so on that you would not want that artist to profit from the art because it then continues to you know let them live in a in a, a cushy lifestyle. But there is you know if if well take for example any of Kevin Spacey's work, I can still enjoy. Kevin Spacey's work without condoning Kevin Spacey. Um, whether or not you want to then go and say Kevin Spacey's a bad person, sure. Yeah, I think there's no there's no uh, question against that. But again, that all is like, hey, here's a, a full grown adult who took advantage of people and kids and so on. Not here's a an adolescent, a, an early adolescent who. Said some stupid said shit. Stupid. Didn't even say some stupid yeah. shit. Mouthed some stupid shit uh, on a. It looked like a video, I guess. Yeah, I fucking around like a FaceTime video. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I have that same problem with Tom Cruise actually, because I love Tom Cruise's work. Yeah. I did not like Tom Cruise at all. No psychopath. The man is horrible, but his work is beyond reproach. It really is. Don't say He's Tom Cruise. Fucking good. Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise. Don't crazy. say anything bad about Scientology. I don't want no private message. <laughs> Dude, I used to go past the Church of Scientology here in LA, the big one with the big blue letters. It's yeah. right. Oh, it's God. it's like twenty minutes from where I'm at, and we used to drive by all the time. And I would hang out the window, making sure that I was really well seen with both fingers up. <laughs> Just film me. Bring it. Look, let's go. I don't. Know, I don't know how many people view this. But I will say that um, Scientology are uh, terrifying. Because I hear oh, that they don't, stop, they don't stop following. Like, I, I, like, even if this podcast only reaches like, a very small number, it's still out there. And, you know, next thing you know, like two weeks, people at my door are hello, we I'm gonna, you said some pretty I'm interesting gonna, things about our program. Would you like I'm going to disabuse you. Like... I'm going to disabuse you of that a little bit because I've got a really good friend of mine that works here in LA and he works part of a major lighting corporation. And one of his biggest contractors is the church of Scientology. And if there's anything that can be said positively about them is that they are phenomenal business people. Yeah. They know how to run a business. He gets sent checks in the mail for like, you know, $180,000 with nothing else Whoa. but the check. And then he'll call them and go, why are you sending me? Oh, that's because we wanted you to do this. We just wanted to send you the money ahead of time. So <laughs> they'll send him money and then he'll go and do, he's been on the, he helped, <clears throat> excuse me, he helped design the lighting set up on their cruise ship <clears throat> and in a lot of their uh, bigger buildings. Yeah, they have their own cruise ship. And so, I mean, I know this guy, we've talked directly with them. I've seen him do his setups. They don't bother me at all. And I'm right here in LA with them. So... <laughs> Don't be that's during their heyday. Yeah. But they're kind of on the way out again. They got, you know, they're, they're, they're on the downside. A bitch. Yes. <laughs> they finally got trapped. Uh, well guys, it's, uh, <clears throat> 11 o'clock. Uh, anyone is who it? wants oh. to, it is anyone who wants to go, uh, zip on over to Chris's. Yeah. We should go see Chris. panel. Uh, yeah. hundred percent should. Um, I'm going to link. The linky do. Um, it was just in our chat, right? Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna link it over yeah, to um, the Twitch stream so that if you'd okay, like I to go it. take a peek, see, uh, we certainly can do that. Let's pop. I just want to say I didn't want to say any anything about wild. Uh, oh, you broke up, buddy. I can't hear you. He's going away. Hello. There you ah. go. There you go. I didn't want to say um, anything about culture or the Billy Island stuff while uh, uh, John, John, I don't know. Was there? Would have felt like bad. Bad taste. Agreed. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I was thinking it, and I was like, "Does it matter?" And I'm glad that you. <laughs> Uh, in the end, it really doesn't. Well, so, I mean, look, the reality is um, when you've got a high profile or, or, or a, a very visible from a you know social media standpoint, 
you become a target for a lot of things. Oh, so yeah. You, you certainly don't need any extra help on that point of view. Uh, all right. In the chat for Twitch, bang, the link is in there. Anyone who is currently watching the Twitch stream should go and enjoy uh, that panel. It is about horror and sound and the sound of horror and so on. Uh, I'm personally looking forward to it. But that does mean I have to end this stream. Uh, so I'm going to end the stream. Do you guys have anything else you want to say? I'm good. It was really good being here again tonight. Oh, yeah. What? I just said be good people. Be good people. I be agree. Good people. Yeah. That's uh that's a that's a good mantra to be in. Live laugh. Live laugh love. Bye bye. See ya, Twitch. See ya, Twitch. Love you guys. <laughs>